Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is April and I am super excited to be with you today. Now we are in the middle of a core concepts video series for med surge nursing, but this is also great for fundamental students as well. Now, as a quick reminder, the core concepts video series is a back to the basics series in which we're really trying to understand what is going on physiologically inside the body so that we can better assess, diagnose and manage our clients with acute and chronic conditions. Now, there have been many previous videos in the core concept series. I don't even know that I can keep count anymore. However, today's video is going to be on glucose regulation. Now, I will have the links to all of the other videos in my description box below. And please remember that every video has an associated case study or study guide that can be found in my Etsy shop, which I will also link in the description box below. So today, let's get started. We're going to talk about glucose regulation. So this is the process of maintaining optimal blood glucose levels, really important part of human functioning. Let's start out and talk just a little bit about carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are our body's best source of energy. They're organic compounds containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they are primarily found in plants, but they are also used in many uh, products as sweetening agents. Now, as adults, we should take in 45 to 65% of our total caloric intake. So 45 to 65% of total caloric intake should be from carbohydrates. So those of you that are on a carbohydrate restricted diet or think that's the best way to lose weight, you really are depriving your body of its best source of energy. So remember, we do need carbohydrates inside of our body. Carbohydrates provide four kilocalories per gram. And we have simple carbohydrates and we have complex carbohydrates. Now, simple carbohydrates provide energy, as do complex, but simple carbohydrates are monosaccharides. So monosaccharides, oh, sorry, they could also be disaccharides, but either way, they're very easily digested. So monosaccharides are the quickest digested and most easily used by the body. Disaccharides though are also very easily digested. So when we eat a simple carbohydrate, it travels very quickly through our GI tract and very almost within 15 or 20 minutes becomes energy in our bloodstream that we can use or sugar in our bloodstream that then can be transferred to our cells and converted to energy. So examples of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. And examples of disaccharides are sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Complex carbohydrates on the other hand provide energy, but they also provide fiber. These are our polysaccharides. So these take much longer to digest. So they take a lot longer to travel through our GI tract. When they eventually hit our bloodstream, if we need them, then they're converted into energy immediately. But if we don't need them, they're stored so that we can then pull them out and use them the next time that we need energy and we don't have enough blood sugar. Okay, so glycogen is a polysaccharide that is stored in the liver um, and in the muscles, and it's what is used as backup energy. So when we eat that complex carbohydrate and it travels through our GI tract and it hits our bloodstream and we don't need it because we already have plenty of energy, that uh, glucose is going to get converted to glycogen stored in our liver and muscles. And then the next time we need it, we can pull it out of our liver or muscles for that quick surge of energy. Now, the process of converting glucose to glycogen is called glycogenesis, and when we convert glycogen back to glucose, it's called glycogenolysis. So those are terms that you probably should be able to recognize. Okay, so again, the best function or the only real function of carbohydrates in the body is for energy. So it provides energy for our cellular work and it regulates our protein and fat metabolism. And so let's talk about that for just a second. If we have sufficient carbohydrates supply in our body, so sufficient blood sugar, then carbohydrates and just a small amount of fat are gonna be used for energy. However, if we deprive our body of carbohydrates or if we just don't eat enough carbohydrates, then we don't have enough carbohydrate supply for energy. And guess what? Our body needs energy for everything, for our heart to beat, for us to breathe, 
for you to sit on the couch and watch TV, you need energy at the cellular level. We're not just talking about energy for exercise. Every function in our body needs energy. So when we don't have enough energy source from carbohydrates or blood sugar, then our body is going to metabolize more fat for energy. Now, a lot of you are thinking, wait, that sounds awesome. I can lose weight if my body is metabolizing fat. And you're right for a time. However, when fat is metabolized, we form ketone bodies. And eventually those ketone bodies build up and we get ketonemia and we can develop ketoacidosis. And so you might think, oh, that sounds familiar. I learned about that with diabetes mellitus. So ketoacidosis is the devastating life-threatening effect of breaking down too much fat um, for energy. So the process of breaking down fat or metabolizing fat for energy is called gluconeogenesis. And so remember, we really don't want to constantly be breaking down fat for energy. We want to have a um, good enough supply of carbohydrates that that can be used as our primary source of energy. And then our body can break down only those small amounts of fat, those safe amounts of fat for energy. Now, lipids and proteins or proteins can also be used for energy, but the brain, our human brain is going to function best on glucose. So sure, our body can use fat and proteins for energy energy, but your brain is not going to work near as well unless the majority of your energy source is coming from carbohydrates. So if enough carbohydrates are provided to meet our energy needs, then protein is going to be spared and used for specific protein functions, and fat is going to be spared to be used for specific fat functions. Okay, so let's walk through our sources of blood glucose one more time. So remember, in order for glucose in our bloodstream to enter the cells, and be converted to energy, we need insulin. Insulin, which is produced by the pancreas. If we don't have that insulin, then we don't have the key to unlock the cell and the blood sugar can never leave the blood stream and go into the cells where it's converted to energy. It will just sit in the bloodstream and get higher and higher and higher. Now, when we eat those simple carbohydrates and those complex carbohydrates, those simple carbs are used immediately. 15 minutes, they're in our bloodstream, converted to energy, as long as we have insulin available. <clears throat> Complex carbohydrates, remember, are going to digest much slower. They're going to be used if we need them once they hit the bloodstream. Otherwise, they're going to get stored in the liver or um, the muscles. Now remember that that uh, glucose that was converted to glycogen can be pulled out and it can be converted back to glucose for energy, but we can also metabolize fat for energy. And this is just another visual of that process happening. This visual is a little bit busy for me and I am a very visual person, but I do find that some students like this visual, so I did want to provide it. So this is just how all of these processes in the body for blood sugar regulation are working together. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you as far as glucose regulation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or to reach out to me via email or my Twitter account. Have a wonderful day. And also remember that there are always case studies or study guides that go along with these core concepts videos, and they can be found in my Etsy shop. And I will link a, I will put a link to my Etsy shop in the description box below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next Core Concepts video.